So we've hand designed our prototype and we're now going to produce on screen our inside of our card, our file one. The software package we use is RoboMaster. So let's just click on that. And to open the package up, we have to go to New in the corner. Click on New, and Document Settings page comes up. It's set at A4 Landscape. And that's the traditional size that you would design. So we say OK. Our page comes up. Our A4 page is, in actual fact, that line there running around all the way around. So that's our A4 page. Our design, although at the moment is fairly simple, at a later stage we'll be bringing printing in. And therefore we need to bring in auto registration marks and we ought to bring in a grid as well to do our drawing. We'll bring in the grid to start with and then we'll talk about the auto registration. So we go to edit. Click on edit and if we look all the way down the bottom we've got the two items I just mentioned there. So we've got grid settings and registration mark settings. Let's put grid settings in first. So we click on grid settings and this page appears. We want to show the grid so we tick it. We want to snap to grid so we tick that. We also have to decide whether we want the grid to be of a line type or a dotted type. I must say I prefer line so I'm going to keep it on line. It's defaulted at 10 millimeters, the grid spacing. That's quite large. And for the product that we were making today, I want to have a smaller size. So let's go for a 5 millimeter. Press OK, and the grid will appear. The next thing we want to bring in is the auto registration mark. So let's go to edit again and go back to the registration marks. These registration marks are printed in three corners of the page and allows the machine to automatically pick them up with a light beam and it ensures the machine will cut in exactly the place you want it to cut in in relationship to any printed matter on the page. And as we're going to employ a printer later, then we need to put these marks on before we start our drawing. So let's just pick them up. This page comes up and we first of all tick Use Registration Marks. We then look at the sizes because the sizes should read 13 by 13 by 240 by 184. OK. And our marks appear. One in each of the three corners of the page. You'll notice there's some hatching just around here. And that hatching is protecting those lines from us inadvertently drawing another black line so close to it that the beam is confused to what line it should be following when it's seeking the auto registration marks. So you can't draw inside this area. If we look at the page, we can see that all the way down this left hand side we have our CAD, Computer Aided Drawing, tools. So we're going to use the majority of those in our drawing. And then when we've done our drawing, 
using them. We're going to then send the information to our CAM tools, these two here, our computer-aided manufacturing tools. There are two. There's this one here, which is called Output Settings, and the actual machine itself, Craft Rover. So let's go down to Rectangle to start with, because that's the shape of our card. And let's depress that and take our cursor to the coordinate on the grid and just drag it, holding down the mouse. Click once more, and we have a shape there, which may not be the exact shape you want at the moment, but we can actually alter it in size and position and rotation. And we do that by using these tools here. And clicking in the corner creates the opportunity to rotate it to whatever angle you require. When you're happy with its size and its shape, uh, you go outside the drawing, your cursor, click, and it will freeze in that position. It will also freeze with the colour of the line shown down the bottom here black. And that's the colour we wanted. As we said when we were discussing our prototype, we wanted a black outside line, a black ellipse, a red dotted spine, and our text and our graphics were going to be in blue. I'm not happy with the position of that and the shape of it, so I'm just going to uh, delete it. To delete it, you take your cursor to the line, click on it, and when it's in blue and with all those markings you are able to delete it. So let's just delete. So we'll go back to our rectangle again and this time we'll draw it to the size we want. Now remember this is a prototype and we can alter it at a later stage if we wish. We're only producing it in paper and we're going to use a biro as well uh, in the initial stages for the text and the, uh, and the graphics. It may be that uh, before we do the card, someone's given you an envelope and you may want to know what the size of this card is uh, to fit neatly into that envelope. Well, you can do that by going up to Draw, clicking on Draw, and at the very bottom, you've got Position Settings. If we click on that, it will tell you the card is 195 millimetres long and 140 wide. So if you had a specific size that you wanted to make, you could put those sizes in there and then simply click OK and it would change to that shape. I positioned my corners in exactly the same position on the page in relationship to the hatched area, top and bottom. That means that that line there and that indicator there on the line, which is showing the centre of that line, is actually on the centre line of the whole page. Yeah. And we said that we wanted the ellipses to be match up, and therefore we had to have our shape exactly on the centre line of the page. I believe we've got that now. So we know that that is the centre of that line, We've also got another one here. That would be very helpful if we were just doing a half card because that would indicate quite clearly where we drop our dashed dotted line down there for our spine of our card. So it's worth knowing and remembering that those are there and we will come back to them at a later date. So let's just go outside and freeze that whole position and shape. We've now frozen it in place. 